Let's go! Ed Orgeron's got me fired up for this true freshman class. In a recent interview, he mentioned Derek Davis Jr. and Sage Ryan and Mason Smith. But those names are expected. It was the fourth and final true freshman name that really stuck out to me. So what should we take away from that? Also, we're going to go over a few other things he said in this interview with WWL. So go on ahead, subscribe to the channel, like this video. And look, things are going to get a little serious at the end. We will address the recent Les Miles revelations. So we'll get to that at the end of the video. But first, look, when you're talking about true freshmen, you got to be careful because you don't want to put too much hype on their shoulders already. But I think it's kind of safe to do that with Derek Davis, Sage Ryan, and Mason Smith. So the interview was very fascinating, and I will link it down below. Uh, number one, it was an overall net positive because Ed Orgeron was talking about the energy in the program and all these different good things with the fourth quarter program and the upcoming spring ball. And he also talked about the Leadership Council dinner, about how he was getting feedback from players and what the team needs to do a better job of. So I thought all of that was absolutely great. Now, the first thing, before we get into the four true freshmen here, Ed Orgeron is dead set on getting another safety. What's fascinating about the safety position is that they do return some experience. Yes, they lose Jacoby Stevens, but they do bring back Todd Harris, who played better at the end of the year. Then Mo Hampton and Cam Lewis and Jordan Tolls. Now, all three of those guys weren't as good as Todd Harris, but in particular, Mo Hampton, they have some real ability. And there was a lot to be said about the coaching of last year's team. If you believe that Bo Pelini was a disaster, if you believe the reports that Bill Bush was a great recruiter but not necessarily a great safeties coach, then you should feel that Durante Jones is going to get at least one of these guys ready to play at the SEC level. Remember, Durante Jones is an NFL defensive backs coach who coached some of the best safeties in the NFL, such as Jesse Bates and most recently Harrison Smith. So if Durante is even a decent position coach, he's going to get all four of those experienced guys to play better than they've already been playing. So, look, I understand Ed Orgeron wanting to get another safety, but I am starting to believe that we can get more out of the guys we already have. With that said, I did list in my defensive back depth chart piece that Derek Davis Jr. is going to start next season as a true freshman. And you've read this quote. This is transcribed from Lon Phillips at the LSU Odyssey. And Look, once again, I thought this interview was full of energy, full of good detail, and I'm starting to really buy into this Derek Davis Jr. hype. So, number one, I think that is absolutely fantastic that Ed Orgeron believes in those two guys, Davis and Ryan, and let's not forget Matthew Langlois, a four-star coming out of New Roads. Now, this is where things got a little confusing, where he said Derek Davis can start at tailback here. Now, the reason why it was partially confusing was because earlier in the interview, Ed Orgeron was asked by Christian Garrick if Derek Stingley Jr. is going to play offense next season. Look, I'll, I'll do a Derek Stingley Jr. video next week. But I want to focus on this very thing. He was not saying Derek Davis is going to play tailback. He was more so pointing out Derek Davis's unbelievably athletic background in Pittsburgh. So he's not playing running back. There is no position switch. But he was more so pointing out that Derek Davis Jr. is one of these hybrid safety linebacker types that can cover a lot of guys into space. Um, Edwards Ron also praised Clemson's Mike Jones, who's coming over, that is very much similar in that same mold, a linebacker that is also really good at covering receivers and tight ends. So, 
look, I believe the Derek Davis hype. I'm really starting to buy in that this guy is going to play a lot next year and start day one. But overall, I'm starting to feel more comfortable about the safety position than most actually feel right now. So we'll we'll see what happens with that. Now, let's get to Mason Smith and this other player that Ed Orgeron mentioned. So here's Coach O once again via the LSU Odyssey. I'm impressed from Terrebonne High School by the name of Mason Smith. Oh, golly. I wasn't around here when Tyson Jackson or Michael Brockers, but people around here are saying he's reminding of them already. Very interesting. So first thing is I do have Michael Brockers' rookie card, and I just got this in the mail today. Tyson Jackson's rookie card. And what's fascinating, let me go on ahead and do another plug here. When we hit 4,000 subscribers, don't forget we're giving out this autographed rookie Thaddeus Moss Prism card. So you want to subscribe, baby. But anyway, this was obviously a really good thing. We all believe the Mason Smith hype. But it was the second name that I thought was fascinating. Bryce Langston may be the best defensive lineman I've ever recruited since I've been here. Now, that is hype. It's one thing if he said that about Mason Smith, who legitimately, if you go by stars, is the best defensive lineman Ed Orgeron has recruited to LSU. But this is crazy to say this about Bryce Langston, and Ed Orgeron might actually be right. What's interesting is Bryce Langston, his final two schools were LSU and Florida. So to get Bryce Langston, it's kind of like the video we were talking about yesterday. If he didn't go to LSU, he would have gone to Florida, who you have to play every year. So that makes him even more special of a recruit. So you get Langston, and the first thing about him is I'm not so sure what position he's going to play. When you look at him from when he played high school football, he oftentimes played as a standing outside linebacker on the edge of the defense. So he played on the line of scrimmage, but as a standing backer. Um, So it's going to be a little bit of a transition. Obviously, LSU doesn't really play that style of defense anymore. They play a more traditional four-man front, which has its pluses and minuses. And Bryce Langston is a thicker prospect. He's a guy that I could easily see bumping down inside and playing defensive tackle. But it's very interesting that Orgeron mentions his name in the interview and not only mentions mentions his name, he does so unprovoked. It wasn't like this was a specific question about the defensive line. And he mentioned his name before some other defensive linemen in this class, which makes the Bryce Langston name drop even more fascinating considering LSU has such a log jam on the defensive line. Not only at defensive end with Ali Gay, Ojolari, Anthony, and the four defensive ends they brought in in this class, but also at defensive tackle with, of course, Mason Smith. And then Neil Farrell, Glenn Logan, B, uh, Eric Taylor, Jacoby and Guillory, and most notably Jaquel and Roy. So if Bryce Langston's going to see the field in year one. By the way, Bryce Langston is not an early enrollee. So he's not even in the program. And Ed Orgeron has already said that Langston has impressed him so much. I also mentioned Bryce Langston's name in my defensive Uh, depth chart piece because he is such an interesting chess piece I do believe in his talent it's just a very interesting fit on if he's going to play a lot next season touch on this story just for a second and I would like to add on the live stream tomorrow night we'll dive a little bit deeper because the Hush Blackwell investigation findings depending on when you watch this they might already be out by now if you're watching this on a late Friday afternoon but Still, we will learn more regarding this story tomorrow. But, you know, regarding these exact details, you guys have read it on the screen already. You've probably already read it today. This is some pretty troubling stuff. And on top of that, of course, uh, Ed, let's say Ed Orgeron, Les Miles strongly denied kissing the student. 
uh, but admitted he did message her. He said nothing inappropriately happened on their private drive together. Investigators agreed Miles at least showed poor judgment by placing the student and himself in this situation. So number one, if you do something extremely messed up, you, know, you deserve to lose your job. That's just the bottom line. But number two, and look, do the morally right thing. That's my point. But another point I want to make is there is no person that is beyond reproach at LSU football. In other words, if you get LSU in any form of trouble, whether it's academic trouble or very serious stuff such as this, whoever it may be, they are not worth it because LSU has won national championships now with three separate coaches. They have won national championships with multiple administrators. They've won a lot of football games with all different types of players. Nobody is worth it. Nobody. Okay? Now, a collective is obviously something you need to win a lot of games. But if one person does something messed up, which obviously with less miles, the way the investigation was handled at the time was not well done, it's not worth it. Less miles is not worth it, okay? And even from a moral aspect of it, he's not worth it. But even as a coach, he walked around like he thought he was the greatest gift to the LSU football program, when the exact opposite is actually true. That is partially part of this. He thought he could do no wrong. It is power, power, LSU. Boom! I think we're having frozen pizza tonight. Let's do it. Frozen pizza. Let's go. Oh. <sighs>